Hello and welcome back to this Let's Play of Planescape Torment with myself, Waze, the nameless one, Dacon, the Fragile, which he will be known as going forth, Anna and Mort. <laughs> what a start. Anyway, anyway, we have just found out that um, the guy in here is Dinara's father, which is a... Uh, rather rather perturbing he's not a particularly nice guy but um we said we'd go back and show him the documents i don't see i don't see any reason not to don't know his legacy if we have a look at this it's just her telling me i know why you are forced to shield your feelings it's about the relationship carry no regrets um you did everything in your power to save me our lives are intertwined um carry my ring with you so yep yeah, she's there shouldn't be any issue he says wondering wondering healing scroll 33 hit points could be useful so yeah let's go back in and see this guy ianis i think his name is done okay that's the advocate there let's go and have a chat you see Iannis, he turns as you enter and affixes you with a tired gaze. There are dark sacks beneath his eyes and he looks as if he has not been sleeping. Greetings, Iannis. You again. Iannis frowns slightly as he stares at you. What is it you want this time? Um, that's some questions. Have we actually met before? The man studies you for a moment, frowning in thought. The wrinkles on his face become more pronounced as he does so. And you're again struck by the toll that age seems to have placed on him. No, yet you seem familiar. Yet. He continues to study your features, then shakes his head. I will concede that there is something familiar about you, sir, and I apologize for any insults my failing memory may be giving you at this moment. I have been preoccupied for some time now. Have we met before? Um. The Let's ignore the question. Uh, preoccupied. You must excuse me. As of late, I have been beset by troubles. I'm afraid it's been rather trying time these past few years. It's probably trying for anyone listening if I'm doing a different voice to what I did last time as well, because I could never remember from one episode to the other what voice I used. But anyway. Um, anything that... Let's ask what troubles first. What what troubles? Ayanna sighs. I do not wish to burden you. I lost my daughter not long ago. There was also the fire, but that is another matter. A fire? There is nothing much to say about the matter. It was a strange localized fire. I cannot imagine what would have been precious in the documents that were burned, but someone must have wanted them destroyed. Hmm. Can you tell me what was burned? A number of old legacies were burned, and some mementos of uh, and other keepsakes of value only to me. Okay, legacies. They are the contracts that are deliverable at the death of the clients. They provide specifics on how a person's possessions are to be divided upon in the event of their demise. I've also heard them called wills. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Ionis, there is a sensory stone in... Oh, do I want to tell him that? Let's get him to look at the legacy first. Or we ask... I don't, I don't know why. The fire... Something about the fire is intriguing me. Can you tell me about the fire? There is nothing much to say about the matter. It was a strange localized fire. Okay, he's already told me about the fire. So, tell me what you burned. Any luck in locating the person responsible for the fire? No, neither the Harmonium nor the Mercy Killers have had any fortune in locating the person responsible. Mm. That's unfortunate. Um, can you tell me about your daughter? Dainara? She was young. She had recently joined the Society of Sensation, the Sensates. Not an unpleasant faction, but she'd also met someone there. She followed him on a journey, and there... She died. Her bod... He looks pained. 
I, I was not even able to recover her body. Okay. I saw one by that name in the turn in the mortuary memorial hall. Hmm, saw a woman. She's become a ghost, claims she knew me. That might be too much for him to take. Say so she was a sensate. Um Forgive me for asking, but if you're not able to recover her body, how do you did you know she had died? No, I know she's dead. Is that just tormenting the guy? There could be some information in there. So many questions I want to ask, and I'm just concerned that if I ask certain questions, the other questions will disappear. So, I'm not going to tell him yet about seeing her. Definitely not going to tell her, tell him that she was become a ghost. That's just that's. You say she was a sensate. Dated my journal. Yes, he becomes slightly more animated, as if warming himself on a precious memory. She had joined them because of her gift and the fact that there was so much about the multiverse that she wanted to experience. The sensates lend themselves readily to the sharing of experience and sensation. Uh, what do you mean, gift? Updated my journal. Oh, yes, Ionis nods. My daughter had the blood of an oracle running in her veins, but it was an unreliable talent. At times, she could predict events before they took place. She had sight. She could see through time itself, sift through the t threads of fate. Okay. Do you know how she died? I do not know. Her body was never recovered. Iron's face turns blood red and his hands clench into fists. And that is perhaps the most maddening part of this misery. I will never know what possessed her to run off like that. What happened to her or nor where her body lies now. Um, do you know where Dianara and this man went on their journey? She never said, and I'm not certain she was capable of saying where they had gone. It must have been a terrible place. Do you know anything about this man she journeyed with? Little. I barely even knew of his existence until she had departed. By then, it was too late to have known him. Okay, so I've never met this guy. Telling him the man was me... He's quite bitter and angry, and I don't have any answers for him, so I don't think that's wise. I think this is a valid question. He doesn't know how she died. He didn't find her body. So how do you know that she actually died? It is most curious. I went to the dustman to see if they had found her body, and they directed me to one of their faction outside the dustman monument. A dustman named Death of Names, I believe. He is said to be an oracle of sorts, concerning those who have died. He told me my daughter had died. Okay. Death of names. I mean, maybe we need to go and find a dustman called Death of Names. Um, told me about the fire. Doesn't know where she went. Doesn't know anything about me. Already asked about the sensate. Perhaps there's something else you can help me with. Uh, very well, what is it I can help you with? Mm. Well, if I show him the legacy, he's going to know it's me anyway, isn't he? So, hmm. Hmm. What to do? We can always come back and show him. We could show him. It doesn't sound like he knows anything at all. I'm not sure... I'm not sure showing him it right now is going to solve anything. The, the sensory stones. I mean, who would see that? I'm going to go out on a limb here and just say that. Ionis, there's a sensory stone in the sensorium that contains a fragment of your daughter's experiences. His eyes blaze with hope. There is, but in which one, you must tell me. Um, it is one of the sensate sensory stones. If you're not a sensate, you could not gain access. He thinks for a moment. I must find a way. Perhaps they would make an exception for her father. Um, hmm. Let's see. Hmm. 
he seems he doesn't seem particularly nice, but he's also he's a bit tormented by his daughter's death, finding out from an oracle, not having a body, not knowing how she died. It's a pretty bad place to be. So I'm not going to charge him. <laughs> I'm not going to say this is a matter between you and them. Tell me more about Dinara. That feels a bit cold. Um, I do not wish to break the Sensate's laws. Nevertheless, I could speak to someone and see if someone something else might be done. Updated my journal. Ionis looks relieved. If you could, I would be most grateful. I'll see what can be done. Um, I would know more about Dianara, though. What was she like? Dianara? She was young. Okay, he's told me this already. He's already told me this. I'm not going to tell him about the body in the mortuary. I just... Not right now, anyway. Maybe, maybe later. Let's go back. Two things. We want to go back to the the mortuary or around the area to see if we can find this dustman. And secondly, we should go back to the sensate of uh, the sensorium. Okay. I mourn your loss. I'll take my leave. Farewell. Right, everyone. Let's go. And hang up with my mouse. I think I've said in a previous episode that I had a mouse ordered and it should be arriving only to get a message saying it's been delivered two days ago and uh, it saying I signed for it and I didn't know such thing. So um, I've had to get a refund. I have to wait for the money to come through and then I can order a mouse again, which is rather frustrating. But anyway, enough of my woes. Let's... Uh, Civic Festival, back to the lower ward. Let's head, yeah, let's head head back here. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Why is everyone running off in different directions? It's not that difficult. Where is everybody going? It's just over here. <laughs> okay, that was rather odd. Pathing. Okay, let's head back this way. Um, where will we go? We go to the, the, the hive. There's a few things that are called the hive. There are different areas of the hive. The sensorium, is, the, is that in the lower ward? Let's see. Uh, the siege tower, print shop, warehouse, marketplace... Wrecked house, pawn shop, alley of lingering size. No, none of those. Where is the sensorium? Was it in the clerk's ward? Did I miss it? All right. The brothel of slating intellectual lusts. Have we been in there? I have to go and check that. I just have to. No, we haven't. Okay. <laughs> right, we've got to check this out. Can we check this I'm out? Gone. Okay. Who have we got? Brothel patron, fall from grace. Let's talk to Fall from Grace. Before you is a stunning golden-haired woman dressed in an azure and violet dress with two long, elegant wings draped across her shoulders. She is surveying the room with a slight smile. She is easily the most beautiful woman you have ever seen. Greetings. Well met, traveller. How may I help you? The woman turns as you address her. She takes your measure, then nods slightly. You notice her eyes are as azure, the exact same colour as her dress. Well met, traveller. She reaches up to brush back a stray lock of golden hair. How may I help you? Um, who are you? Dated my journal. I am called Fall from Grace. She studies you for a moment. You are new to Sigil, are you not? Um, Fall from Grace, that's an interesting name. She nods. I am pleased that you like it, but I am sure that you do not come all this way to flatter me. What is it I can help you with? Uh, what is this place exactly? 
This is the brothel of slating intellectual lusts. She studies you for a moment. I take it by your question that you did not intend to partake of this establishment. A brothel of slating intellectual lusts. What kind of brothel is this? I established this brothel to give those lustful fevers that strike the mind more avenues of expression rather than simply carnal. Much pleasure can be had in conversation and engaging in the verbal arts with others. Sounds dull. <laughs> Mort, be quiet. <laughs> I assure you, it is not. Tour the brothel, see for yourselves. So this is a brothel where there's no intercourse. Only of a psychological nature. Rest assured, it is still quite stimulating. Okay, I have to ask, why did you establish such a place? Fall from Grace raises an eyebrow. That is an odd question. She frowns. I don't think anyone has ever asked me that, at least directly. Okay, so why did you? Part of the answer to your question requires that you know that I am a member of the Society of Sensation. Our faction believes that one should experience as much of the multiverse as possible. Um, and that's why you established this place. This brothel is intended to slate the lust of even the hardened intellectual. It is designed to stimulate the mind, to heighten one's awareness of themselves and others, to create new ways of experiencing another person. It is for those who seek something more than the shallow physical pleasures that fill the hive and lower wards. Um... <laughs> I see, so this establishment just encourages intellectual fencing rather than, um, well, the other kind of fencing. The women here must be special indeed. The women here are aspiring sensates. They have come to me in search of instruction to prepare themselves to enter the faction. Also, many of them have a natural grasp of language that can shatter the crust of m the most hardened individual. Um, okay. I'll have a tour of the brothel. As we're here, we might as well. Nothing, nothing dodgy going on. Okay, we'll nip out here. Hi. While Anna nips in here. We don't know what she's doing. Finnam's book. Anna has uh, sticky fingers, not the rest of us. Just, just to be clear. That's what she does. We'll keep walking down here. Hmm? Anna Why just not? says to give her a moment. Oh, Juliet. This dark-haired young woman is staring listlessly off into space, sighing miserably and occasionally picking at the seams of her green velvet gown. It's difficult to discern whether she's depressed or simply bored. Bored. Hello. She gives you only the briefest of glances before staring off into the distance once more. Greetings, yes. I am named Juliet. How may I? Oh, never thou mind. Leave me be, please. She gives an exasperated sigh. Uh, what's wrong? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Only that I spend my days gazing into the face of mediocrity, seeing if anything can erase its dreadful, tedious passage. Is your life so tedious? Alas, it is, she sighs, closing her eyes and massaging her temples. Dreadfully boring. Uh, perhaps I could make it less boring for you, my lady. Uh, I'm certain I could add some excitement to your life. Um, but bearing in mind the nature of this place... It's conversation, so perhaps I could make it less boring for you, my lady. No, no, it is kind of thee to offer, though. I am already with a man, sir, and I do love him dearly. It is just that I wish... She taps her finger against her chin. Something more of our liaison. Is the relationship lacking, then? The only thing it lacks is excitement, sir. Our families took the news of our courtship splendidly. His siblings love my siblings, and our friends think our union to be blessed by the powers themselves. All fine and good, but things are going... She frowns. So smoothly. It's not right to have such a trouble-free courtship. I don't know about that. Dost thou not? Hast thou ever had such a courtship? She glances briefly at you. It would seem that thy life is filled with a variety of problems, judging by the pallor of thy skin. Um... I can't remember any courtships I've had, but the remnants of the one I have encountered suggest that I may have had some problems. 
It is just that all my friends have such interesting relationships. One's fraught with turmoil, feuding families, daggers at one another's backs, poison, mad siblings, and irate fathers with large swords. I have a lover whose family loves me and whom the world loves. She sighs again. A great source of annoyance. How I wish I could formulate some way to spice things up. Mort floats close to you, whispering. I was waiting for it. I feel sorry for a lover. He doesn't know how bad he has it. A chit like this is nothing but trouble. <laughs> um, that doesn't sound wise, Juliet. Relish what you have. I wish to experience troubles, though. I wish to experience the ups and downs of courtship. But with him, no other. She sighs. Ah, such a thing as love. It could be as dull as a club and is of no use to an aspiring sensate. An aspiring sensate. Juliet exhales a long and forlorn sigh. You realise she's not even looking at you. Juliet, did you hear me? Updated my journal. Hmm? Oh, I was not truly listening. My apologies. But certainly thou hast not come simply to deliver a litany of questions on my life of tedium and my tedious doings. Uh, actually, yes, I did have questions. Juliet rolls her eyes. Oh, go on, if thou must. What are you doing here? Juliet exhales along a fallen sigh. Oh, she's not listening. Did you hear me? I have some questions. Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? Nope, same again. Long and forlorn sigh. Okay, we lost her. Uh, there is something in here, but Anna, that's going to be too risky. Done. Okay. Let's wander around. So much to explore in Planescape Torment. We have Nenny Nine Eyes. Well, there's a, there's a name if ever I heard one. Let's talk to Nenny. This petite, attractive young woman is smiling blissfully and humming to herself. Her wide, pale blue eyes seem to constantly drink in her surroundings as she looks about. Greetings. The smiling young woman curtsies gracefully and looks up to you smiling. Well met, good sir. I'm Nenny. And how are you, this fine d She suddenly notices your scars and places a gloved hand over her mouth. Oh my, you're hurt, she blinks, all over. Mort spins around you, mocking the girl's obviousness. Powers above, chief, she's right. I never noticed before, you're covered in scars. <laughs> They're old scars, I'm fine. She nods quietly, lowering her hand. I had some questions. Huh? She can't seem to tear her eyes away from your scars. Oh, how shameful of me. Don't mind my rude staring. I'm named Nenny. She makes a little curtsy. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our brothel for the slating of intellectual lusts. She returns to staring at your body. You have tattoos under those scars too. What's that one? She points at one of your tattoos. That one's... Looks fascinating. Look at the way the lines of ink... I, I think that's ink. She squints at the tattoo, then reaches out to touch it. I will allow her to touch it. I think that's ink. She traces a finger around the edge of the tattoo. Is it ink? And what a pattern. Look at the way the lines intersect here. She touches the centre of the tattoo. That's simply amazing. She purses her lips and frowns in disappointment. I could make it out better if there weren't so many scars. Uh, there's nothing to be done about the scars. They're sort of permanent. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pox on me for even mentioning them. She cringes. But I have to know. Are you absolutely sure you're all right? I'm looking at you and I can't help but believe you're not in some pain. Um... I have rather serious bouts of amnesia, but that's all. Amnesia. Then he blinks, then brightens. Loss of memory. You are so lucky, she chimes perkily. Everything must be so new to you. There is um, truth in that, but the newness is unwelcome. She blinks. That sounds so sad. Um... Uh, um Yes, it is. Not really. Uh, not really, but I had some questions. Please ask. She smiles goodly. Can you tell me about this place? I'm sure I can. The Brothel of Slating Intellectual Lust is a school that was started by Mistress Fall from Grace. The prostitutes here, like me, are taught the ins and outs of talking to people. All to a <laughs> choice of words. All to help us learn more about ourselves and others. I love it here. It's a non-stop wave of experiences crashing into me, filling my head with fresh new ideas. Mort mutters to himself, I guess it's good that there's something in there. Mort, be quiet. Uh, 
what are you doing here exactly? I'm talking to you, silly. She giggles and pokes you in the belly. Just like I talk to all the patrons here. All the prostitutes do. That's what the brothel's about. Learning new ways to talk and share experiences and understand other people. Okay. Nenny, do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? Updated my journal. Oh. No, sorry. That's a great name, though, huh? I bet she's a really interesting person. Hey, you should ask Eves about her. Eves collects all kinds of stories. Okay. Eves. We will look for Eves. That's all I wish to know. Farewell, Jenny. Right, people. Let's look for Eves. Many doors in here. This could be the brothel episode by the looks of it. Not that kind of brothel. It's all been explained. Who's this? Echo. Interesting name. This striking young woman has, the skin, has skin the color of burnished copper. A translucent white dress held precariously by golden clasps is draped carefully over her shapely form. Hello. The woman nods and smiles briefly. The scent of her hair, sweetly perfumed, fills your nostrils. Mind if I ask you some questions? She nods. Uh, can you tell me about this place? She looks at you, then raises an eyebrow. Can you actually speak? She shakes her head and smiles sadly at you. My journal. I love this chit already. Mort. <laughs> He's some character, Mort, I have to say. Uh, can you write then, or pantomime? She pouts, shaking her head. Um, this seems like a strange question to ask. May I ask why you can't communicate? She sighs softly and nods. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Let me ask you about something else. Let's just ask her about Ravel, Ravel Puzzlewell and see if she has any reaction. Her eyes flash and she smiles. She nods at you. Oh, you're kidding me. What? What do you know of her? Updated my journal. She simply looks at you. Oh my God, this is so frustrating. May I ask why you can't communicate? She sighs softly and nods. Okay. That is frustrating as hell. What does my journal say? Um, okay. Juliet. Um, seems the only thing she cares to speak of is her self-professed, miserably boring life. I asked one of the brothel's prostitutes about Ravel. She suggested I speak to Eves. Okay. Uh, one of the prostitutes I met has lost her ability to communicate. She can't or won't. Until she can speak again, I won't be able to question her. Didn't we... I wonder if we spoke to the guy outside... Outside... He was outside the Civic Fest Hall. Can't remember his name now, but I wonder if he'd have a spell that could help with that. The silent prostitute seems to know something of Ravel Puzzle World, but as she cannot communicate, she cannot tell me what it is. That's just playing with me. Who's this? That's just a brothel patron. Nothing in here. Of note... Not for us, anyway, as we keep walking. Okay. Anna. Might as well. Anna, Anna dawdles behind. Can we close this door? Nope, you can't close the door. Okay. Container is locked. That's no problem for Anna. Lockpick succeeded. Gold earring. She's running out of room. What about over here? Container is locked. Anna seems to be o able to open nearly any handkerchief, silver bracelet. We'll take the silver bracelet. You're such a klepto, Anna. It's terrible. And another gold earring. Okay. Now she's going to come out and she is going to slip some of this stuff to Mort. Just so she's got some room. And if I can do it without my, my mouse packing up on me. Uh, anything else? The silver bracelet. Yeah. Okay, it's more, Mort's almost full. We need to sell some stuff at some point. We have, in the last few episodes, we actually started using some stuff. So that's good. The handkerchief. I don't think we actually need that. Let's hang on to it, just in case. Last words of a hoarder. Okay. Done. Another door. Anything in here? Oh. Anna found some stairs. Okay, interesting. 
Let's finish uh, up here first, though. Finish our exploring. Will that door not open? It will. I'm here. Enter stealth mode. No, okay. Right. Okay, Marissa. Let's talk to Marissa. Squinting at the figure behind the partition, you can barely make out a shapely female form in the darkness. She turns to you, but you can see nothing of her face. Greetings. The figure answers in a voice that is slow and deadly, like a steel dagger drawn across stone. Yes. Come to speak with Marissa, have you? Quite rude of you to enter a darkened room, storming behind my partition like so rude and foolhardy. You can hear a faint whispering sound like a slight breeze or the hissing of serpents. Mort whispers quietly, Whoa, creepy shit. Um, my apologies, my lady. I wasn't sure if someone was here. The woman gives a slight, hmm. But it would seem there is someone in this room, wouldn't it? Shall you be on your way then? Um, just going, but just, if you wouldn't mind, I had some questions. Ask. Um, what are you doing here? Sitting here with my thoughts, listening to you voice yours. The silence of both of them, literal, then figurative, is deafening. Um, why do you have such a terrible disposition? Yes, I won't ask that one. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Oh, I think not. You would find them most unflattering at this moment. What is it you want? Um, just some questions. Uh, why do you remain behind this screen? Is it your wish that I step away from this partition into some patch of light and speak to you face to face? Marissa laughs and there is the sound of scales sliding on scales. Nay, I think not. The darkness suits me and doubtless suits you as well. Why is it so dark in here? To prevent any unwanted and embarrassing casualties. Now what is it that you want? I want you to come into the light. Nay, and the addition of please will not serve to persuade me. Now what do you want? Surely you did not come all this way to see me. But I do want to see what you look like, because you have all my curiosity all bouncing around now. You have no such want. I can't, I'm not going to say, oh, I do. That's like pantomime stuff. Um, but I will. Oh, I do. <laughs> what do you look like? The darkness hides us both. Let's make it a game. I'm frightfully bored. Let me guess. Are you a human male? Uh, yes. Are you wounded in the throat? Um, I can't see, but I believe so, yes. Hmm. Describe yourself for me. Truth. I'm tall, muscular, and horribly scarred. Indeed. Hmm. She pauses for a moment. How were you so horribly scarred? Wait, never mind. I do not wish to know. Okay, now describe yourself for me. Marissa describes herself as a shapely, pale-skinned, beautiful woman with a forked tongue, hair made up of writhing asps and glowing eyes, which you assume she must be keeping shut. Are you a fiend? Updated my journal. Marissa laughs lightly, the sound accompanied by a slight hissing. No, hardly. Though I have powers some might call fiendish. My glance turns living things to stone, for instance. From beings of flesh to statuary with the bat of an eyelash. Why would I want to turn Lim Lim into a statue? Uh, that must be inconvenient at times. Updated my journal. You think so? That must be why I sit here alone in the dark hiding behind a partition. Though you can't see Marissa, you're certain she's sneering. She suddenly sighs. If only I knew where my crimson veil had gone. Have you seen it, perchance? Um, no. What's it for? Just a normal veil? Marissa sighs quietly. Not, not quite. It aids me in communication. Face-to-face -face communication, that is. Okay, I'm not going to ask her why she needs to hide her face, because she's already told us. I'm going to click the button, though, just in case there's anything else. Um, 
Okay. Why would I ask her to turn Lim Lim into a statue? That doesn't make any sense. What can you tell me about the silent prostitute? Updated my journal. Yes, Echo. I knew another Echo once, though her name was written differently. I know nothing of this girl, though. Ask Delora of her. She made friends of an old lover of Echo's, I have heard. Okay. Um, do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? No, do you? You hear an annoyed sigh from out of the darkness. Go ask Eves. She collects many tales and could po probably tell you something of use. Okay. Get asked. Well, that was interesting. Interesting indeed. I'm gone. Crimson Veil. Need to keep an eye out for that. We haven't found Eves yet. Yes, this is most definitely going to be an episode in a brothel. Uh, YouTube's probably flagging my words right now as well. But whatever. Okay, we will keep going. And, and Anna will dawdle behind. For no apparent reason. Another handkerchief. Don't think we need that. Okay, do your stuff, Anna. No lock seems safe from Anna. Oh, damn mouse. Right, people. Done. Okay. Kesai Seris, patron Delora. Oh, she said about speaking to Delora. Let's do here first. Who have we got? Kima Kimaski Adatung. Okay, got to speak to her. The wild-looking tiefling girl meets your gaze with an angry scowl. Her tattooed body is practically naked, covered by only a narrow leather thong, a black cloth brazier, and armoured shoulder pads that appear to serve more as decoration rather than actual protection. Her spiked hair, as well as the thin fur that covers her goat-like legs, is brassy white, and numerous silver rings dangle from her ears, nostrils, lips, and brow. She wears a leather collar around her throat with the inscription, Kimaski Adatung. Hello. Kamaski bears her teeth at you. And just what are you looking at, you banged up sod? My friend thought you were attractive, but whoa, was he ever horribly mistaken? <laughs> Mort is going to get us into trouble. She sneers at Mort, then looks below him where a body would normally be. Sharp tongue for a stemless deader. That's enough, you two. Sure, chief, whatever. What a witch, huh? Mort humphs, then waggles his eyebrows. I like that. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Mort, but I need to talk to her, so shut up. The tiefling rolls her eyes. And what makes you think I care? Why don't you lick my backside? Uh, my tongue is not wide enough and I don't like hair in my mouth. <laughs> oh, this game. Um... <laughs> I've got to say it. My tongue's not wide enough and I don't like hair in my mouth. Well, you seem to like the taste of offal in your mouth, you dung breath cretin. No, I, only because it's like kissing you, you man mangy sting part. <laughs> kiss me. She makes a retching sound. I'd rather kiss a bloody mass of phlegm than lay my lips on you. No, thanks. Don't thank me. Thank the powers someone actually wants to kiss you. Kamax Kamaski looks at a loss for something to say. For an instant, a smile threatens to crack the grimacing mask of her face. Then she becomes more of a basilisk, basilisk than ever. All right, what do you want of me? Questions answered. She looks annoyed. Fine, whatever, asked. Who are you exactly? My name? Uninterested. I can guess yours though, Scar Bunch. Get out of here before I put a fire under your ass. Um, uh, ask another question. <laughs> Say, can you teach Mort here to be more abusive? <laughs> she raises her eyebrows. Now, that's an unusual request. I don't know. It seems pretty foul-mouthed already. He? That's he? Seems pretty foul-mouthed. Kamaski bladder dung, you scruffy goat gammed harlot. You wish you had legs like mine, you pitiful wretch of a bone box. I can walk, run, dance. What do you do? Bob around wishing you had a pair, goats or otherwise. The two of them lay into one another, exchanging barbed, blistering insults and clashing with razor-edged tongues. Wait for it to end. <laughs> At last, the two stop their bickering and eerie silence settles over them as they eye one another hatefully. 
Finally, the tiefling makes a grudging admission to Mort. You're not bad, really. Not bad at all. Better than you, perhaps. Mort's waggle, Mort waggles his eyebrows at her. Huh? Eh? Huh? Eh? <laughs> Kamaski narrows her eyes at Mort. Don't push it, Skull. New taunts. All right. <laughs> I won't, tiefling. I will admit I've learned a thing or two, though. Good thinking, chief. Sure thing, Mort. Okay. Kamaski turns to you. So is that all you wanted? I'm not spending any more time near you than I have to. Look, I did have some other questions. Um, I'm trying to find Marissa's Crimson Veil. Do you know where it might be? She smirks. <laughs> up your ass, perhaps. Hells, I don't know. Kamaski smooths back her hair, which instantly springs back up into a spiky mess. What else can we ask her? Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? What would I know about her? I look like a scholar or something to you. Go ask some more learned or Eves. She'll probably have at least one story about her in that pile of tales she carries about in her bone box. Oh, and squat on a halberd while you're at it. <laughs> we know we know what type of pa patrons will be coming to her. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> okay. Kesai, Vivian, Dolora. Who, who's this? That's four from ground. Okay, one more room. Eves, the tail chaser. Finally. Let's talk to Eves. This fetching young woman has a faraway look in her soft sea green eyes. Greetings. Greetings. I am Eves, the tail chaser. What a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. I too chase tails. Of course you do, Mort. <laughs> Eves continues unperturbed. Have you come to trade tails? Um... Why not? This could be interesting. Eves nods. I would like that very much, yes. Okay. There could be a good bit in this. And then we need to go and see... Um, who's Delora, Delora. So I think... We will continue our uh, brothel adventure in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you're well. And until next time, take care.